This video is going to continue in our series on named distributions, and specifically we're going to dive a little bit deeper into the binomial distribution. We're going to start by simulating some fake data in R, and then we're going to estimate the density function for the binomial distribution at specific points. That is, we're going to try to estimate the value represented by f at x given values for k and p for specific values of x. Hopefully that'll make a little bit more sense once we start seeing some data and looking at a plot. So all of this is going to take place in R. We'll jump over there now. So I'm going to build off of the code we developed for the binomial density function itself. I'm going to continue with p equal to 0.5 and k equal to 10 as if we're going to um, flip a fair coin 10 times, sum up however many heads we saw in, that, in those 10 flips, and call that one binomial observation. The only real thing I'm going to do here is adjust the y limits of this plot just make it a little bit taller, uh, just kind of foreshadowing some pieces to come. So let's generate, for now, just one binomial observation. We're going to use the function that starts with the letter R for randomly generate, and then binome, because we're looking at the binomial distribution. We're going to go N, and then K, and P. So K and P have already been declared. We will now declare N, and then run this code. And indeed, we generated one binomial observation. That five down there in the console is saying we observed five heads out of 10 flips. And according to the density function, which we have plotted here, five is the most likely value to show up amongst all the values this binomial observation could take on. Let's generate some more data. We'll just go again, 4. 4 is the next most likely value after 5 and equal in uh, likelihood to 6 to be generated. So let's try again. 5, good, we've seen that one. 5, 5 comes up a lot. 6 is, again, most similarly likely, like 4. OK, you know what we're going to have to do? Now that we've generated single binomial observations, let's just generate a lot of them, say 13. Aha, here we go, and these are some good values too. On the first of 10 Bernoulli fair coin flips, we observed six heads. On the next sequence of 10 flips, we observed three heads. On the next sequence of 10 flips, we observed seven heads. On the next sequence of 10 flips of a fair coin, we observe five, uh, four heads. On the next sequence of 10 flips of a fair coin, we observed four heads. Hopefully, we're getting a better idea now of what the binomial distribution is doing, whereas the density function is telling us uh, which values are more likely to show up than others under repeatedly flipping a fair coin 10 times. Now, what I'm going to do is take those 13 values, regenerate them, and store them into a vector named x. And then I'm going to lead with this new code here. x equals equals 5. Equals equals in most programming languages is asking a question. So in this case, it's going which values of x are equal to 5. And if we hit enter and look at x, we can see the first value of x is indeed equal to 5. So it responds true. The second value of x is not equal to 5, so it says false. The third value of x is not equal to 5, so it says false. The fourth and fifth values are also not equal to 5, but the sixth is, so 4, 5, and 6. Okay, so equals equals is like asking the question, which values of x are equal to the thing on the right-hand side? Now, what's cool about r is trues and falses are essentially ones and zeros. So you could add up all those trues and falses. And indeed, if you add up the trues as one, 
and false is at zero, so they don't contribute anything. We see one, two, three, four, fives, and that's exactly what we get. Now, if we take that sum and divide it by how many observations we have, then we can estimate this probability. And in fact, that's exactly what the mean is doing for us. It is allowing us to estimate f at 5, the density function of the binomial distribution at the value 5, given p is equal to 0.5 and k is equal to 10. So you can see 0.3 is pretty close to, what is this? I don't know, maybe about 0.25 or so. Okay, so let's try a challenge piece of code here. You ready for this? If this is estimating, let's call it f hat at five, given k and p, what I'd like to do is be able to come up with a vector of values f hat for all values that x could take on. So I'm going to start by creating f hat, which is going to repeat 0, uh, k plus 1 times. I'm going to repeat 0, k plus 1 times to say that x could take on 0 to 10. That is 11 different values. So I'm going to develop some code. It's going to be fairly new to most of us. Uh, but as this video progresses, remember, after you evaluate a line of code that is particularly challenging to you, go down into the console and print out that code so you can see what is happening at each step along the way. So this next one, I'm going to build up in pieces. We're going to start with a table of the values in x. This is a table representing the values that x has taken on and the number of times x has taken on those values. So just like we saw before, 5 showed up 4 times. And in fact, 6 shows up 2 times. And you can double check that if you want. So let's see, there's 1, 2, 6s showing up just coincidentally right next to each other. So I don't want just the counts of the values. What I want are proportions of those values. I want all of the counts divided by this number of observations, 13. So I'm going to store that into a not cleverly named variable, temp, and run it and then print it out if you need to. The next line is a little bit of magic in the world of R. I'm creating an index that won't obviously have a lot of purpose just yet, but hopefully it will soon. So this next line of code is also some R magic, but I think once we take all of these pieces together, let's see, we have temp, idx, and f hat. What we essentially have done is taken all of these proportions. You can see here's the proportion we calculated originally that estimates the density function at the value 5 it just shows up here. We've essentially repeated this calculation, the mean of x equals equals some number, across all the different values that x has taken on. And then by taking the indices associated with those values, we are storing them into f hat. So you can see into the one, two, third position, that is in the first element of IDX, at the third position of F hat, we are putting the first value of temp. Okay, you ready? We'll do that again. Into the fifth position of F hat, that's what this notation is saying, into the fifth element of F hat, store the second value of temp. And into the one, two, three, four, fifth element of f hat, store the value of temp. Okay. And then at the sixth position of f hat, we want the value associated with 5. Now we've got to have this plus 1 here 
If you're wondering why into the sixth position we store the value associated with five, that's because of this plus one. Remember that x can take on all the values from zero to 10. So this plus one is accounting for the fact that x can take on a zero value. Okay, so now that we have f hat here, we can add to our plot across all the values that x can take on the vector of x uh, f hat, and we want to color the points orange. So you can see what we've done here is x has no zeros in it. So we've estimated f at zero to be basically zero. f has no one, I mean, x has no ones in it. So we've estimated f at one to be zero. f at two is some positive amount because there is one, two in our uh, vector x. Here is plotted our estimate of f at five, and you can see it's quite close to the true value of f at five. In fact, all of these are somewhat close to their true values of f at x. So our orange points, the estimates, are quite close to the true values um, f at each value of x. But notice, all of this code, as complex as it is, only depends on the value of x, on the vector x. It in no way depends on the letter k or p. Let's look at that again. Notice this highlighted code here only depends on the values in x. In no way depends on the k or the p. This is what the world of statistics does. It estimates these values, like p in particular, using only the data using only the data, only the values of x show up in here. And from it, we can estimate the density function at each value of x. I encourage you to take this code, move this code chunk to here, and now change the value of p and change the value of n. Generate new data and then make your plot all over again. Change the value of p, change the value of n, uh, generate new data, and make your plot all the way through. As you start gaining experience with how close the estimates get to the true values, really start increasing your sample size and see what happens to the estimates relative to the true values.